Okay, so the original setup that I had here on the bench only had one amplifier. But as you guys can see, now I plan on putting a little bit more power on the bench. I'm going to be running two uh, amplifiers. I'm going to be running both of these audio pipe strap. Now, in order to do that, I got to change up my wiring, my wiring uh, schematics right here. As you guys can see, this can do, I think this is actually one out and two out. But I'm going to see if, as you guys can see, can tell one of these are already preoccupied with what's coming out of here. So this is going to feed into one of these holes. And um, with this being only four gauge wire, I think I can feed both of them into that one and have two runs coming out of here. That way I don't have to like do something like this, right? I don't want to have to do this and hang it off of the nut. I hate, I hate that. It just looks so tacky. <laughs> I mean, it works. Don't get me wrong. It works. I've done it in the past. I had no issues, nothing burned up or anything like that, but I just don't like the look of it. So I'm going to try to utilize some ferrules to get the job done. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. All right, guys. So these are ferrules. All right. Hopefully you guys can, can read that and the, the glass ain't messing with you. I mean, the, the glare ain't messing with you. Okay, so they're in their respective slots here. So let's get one from here. That's two gauge and this is one eye. So we have a two gauge. And this, of course, is a one eye that didn't fit. And that's two eye. And four is in the corner over here. But I'm going to go get, I'm going to grab one of those. All right. Okay, this is one out. We know that ain't gonna fit. I can make this fit though. And two out is a bit small for me, but I think that other little hole right there, that's two out. I'm gonna take it out. Yep, I use a ferrule in there as well. So let's get this guy going. Okay. And let's try to fit. This is the, the two out. Ooh, that's a tight fit. This is two out. So I'm guessing this is supposed to be a one out. Maybe the uh, the furrow itself. Maybe it's a bit large, or maybe this is just milled a bit too close, right? So I can make this fit. I'm gonna show you how I do that. Okay, so what you want to do is grab a, a pair of scissors that'll fit inside the ferrule. In this case, it should fit in here. And you want to you want to cut this thing almost up to this to the lip. Okay, it has two ends. One is flared, and the other one is not. You want to cut the one that is not. Start cutting down here. And it's this very thin copper. So there you go. Cut almost up to there. That ain't picking up at all. Where, where is the cut? Okay, there we go. You guys see what I did there? There we go. But anyway, so once you do that, what will happen? I think it's self-explanatory at this point what's going to happen. We're going to straighten that out, of course. We're, we're going to straighten that out later. But as you push it into the hole, it's going to form to the hole because now it can actually compress and twist upon itself and shape to the hole. This is not recommended, but... It, it gets me by. I've done this a lot. Um, so you twist it. You see? Now, I can force this all the way in the hole, but I'm not. I'm going to wait till I get the wire in there so I can smash it down with the, with the, uh, with the grub screw. So that, that's, that's how I handle those situations. Anyway, moving on. Okay, since I do have everything like taken apart, I mean, I'm in the middle of this, right? So I may as well just take whatever wire that doesn't have ferrules on it, ferrules on them, and go ahead and just put ferrules on them. Now, the thing about the ferrule for, for people who have not seen them before, like I said earlier, it has a flared end. This is the end you want to put your, your wire in. Okay, you want to put your wire in that end. It makes it easier on you. Do not try to put it in that end. I mean, you can get it in that end, but... 
it, it just doesn't make sense. The flare is to make it easy for you, okay? So let me see if I can get a close-up for you guys on this. Now, typically, you know, you got people that use zip ties and stuff to kind of keep them bunched up. But I think I may be able to work it into some sort of a twist. This is oversized four gauge as well, so that doesn't make it really that much easier. But let's do it like that. Boom. Yeah, so this is coming from my power converter, so I'm just going to get it buttoned down. I'm going to try to give you guys a kind of like a, a good view of this thing being smashed in. Be careful because the wire is going to want to work its way out of there. I'm just, I'm doing this right now very awkwardly so, just to give you guys some close-up. So hopefully the light will allow you guys to appreciate that. You see what the grub screw is doing in there? It's forcing that thing into a pancake. And it's going to make like a perfect indention. I can bag off a little bit now. You see that? It's going to make like a perfect mold. It's going gonna, it's gonna to force that thing to shape to whatever available space is in there without tearing your wires up. So ferrules are the way to go, guys. They're fairly cheap, and they get the job. They really get the job done. And most of them that I've ever seen had a had a protective coating on it as well. But they're they're made of copper. And if not stated, please get only those that say made of copper, tin to copper. But anyway, there's that. Moving on. If you are enjoying this video and would like to learn a little bit more about how to simplify car audio please consider clicking that subscribe button so you don't miss a thing. Okay, so one of my wires are a little bit longer than the other one. No biggie, I gotta cut all these ends off anyway. So I'm just gonna get everything cut evenly. That's pretty much what's going on here. And sometimes it's impossible to get the furrows off once you do this. But what just keep in mind, what we're doing is trying to take one end of this and make sure that we have two runs for each of our amplifiers. So we wanna make these ends connected with the furrow. And since these two already have ends, uh, furrows on them, they're just going to amplify like they are. And yeah, I do know that the uh, the audio pipes that I'm working with, the amplifiers, they, they do call for one gauge wire, but guys, we're literally, what, <laughs> two feet from our power source. Less than that, to be honest with you, but this wire here is about four foot long, so it's gonna be about a three foot run from here to the amp. This four gauge wire is perfectly fine. You don't have to worry about it. It's not gonna overheat and do nothing crazy, okay? So I'm just gonna be using these guys. So first let me mark where I'm gonna cut, and that's right here, and that's what we're gonna do. All right, let's get this going. There's our ferrule right there. I'm just gonna push them, push them right in there. Just like that. Keep it going and just shove it as hard as you can. And give it some twists. See how much of that is in there? And when I tighten down on it, when I tighten down on that, Oh snap, this one's not tight enough. And when I tighten down on it, it's gonna, it ain't going nowhere, I bet you. I wanna give you guys a close up of this one as well, but 
Let's see if I can do it. See if I can give you guys a close up. There we go. Because it will push out if it's not secured enough. So I'm going to squeeze them. See if I can give you guys that bird out of view. There we go. That's what you want to hear. You want to hear that metal against metal grinding. That's the way you know it ain't going nowhere. There you go. One more click. We should be good. That's in there. It ain't going nowhere. Now see now that's just the jacket pulling back on the other one. It ain't going. They ain't going nowhere. Once the once you tighten those ferrules down good enough, you're good to go. Now let me get the spaghetti out of the way so you can actually see what it is that we're that we're, that we're accomplishing here. What we're accomplishing here is dual runs. Okay. Let me make it. Let me make it look pretty. Okay. There you go. Now those are your dual runs. You can do this with any size wire. As far as the dual run, you can do this with any size wire. In our case, we're using four gauge. Okay, but you can do this, you know, as long as, as you have an adequate enough piece of metal right here, you can do this. I believe this is brass, if I'm not mistaken. This is brass, way hot, heavier than aluminum. I don't think it's copper, but... um. I think it's brass. I can't, I can't, I don't recall. But anyway, uh, yeah, this, this is what it looks like, man. This is what it looks like. So we're going to do the exact same thing with that one over there. Then we're going to go ahead and get the, the amplifiers set up.
here's another piece of cable that I just uh, pretty much salvaged from the uh, Impala bill. Like I said, this wire is still in great shape, man. Uh, so what I'm going to be doing now is this is going to be my two runs from the fuse box block to the amplifier. So I guess I just got to put some firewalls on them. We got our negative, we got our negative and ter uh, positive terminals running to our battery terminals, okay? Negative to negative, positive to positive, all right? So from the battery, okay, we got two runs coming off of each negative and positive, these two terminals. They are later on going to connect to the battery. Okay? Our positive terminals are fused, individually fused. Okay? These guys here are going to go inside of here. All right, guys. So there you have it. Pharaohs. Of course, this wasn't a complete in-depth video on pharaohs, but I just wanted to get the conversation going. Is a pharaoh something that you have been using already in your build, or is this something brand new to you? Whatever the case, leave a comment in the sections below, share it with the community. Is this something that you think is worth buying, or is it a complete waste of time? Let us know in the comment sections below, and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for visiting the channel to help you simplify car audio. It's the Budget Bass here, and I'm out.